Hello world and welcome to another episode of WooBar. In today's video we are going to talk about Epsagon, that is a monitoring tool, a third-party monitoring tool for serverless applications. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started! <laughs> Another video in my monitoring tools. I have created the first video that is an introduction on monitoring and tools and what we are looking for in them. Then I created a second video that is about using artillery and uh, this load testing tool that you will be interested in uh, watching that video if you want to follow the instructions in this one because that's the first part and this is the second part. So we are configuring the application there and here we are configuring Epsagon and seeing it in the real works. And then I made a third video that is about AWS X-Ray. So we talk a little bit about uh, AWS monitoring tools. And this is the first of the third party monitoring tools I want to look. Epsagon, I think is one of my favorites and I think yours because when I ask about tools, you mention Epsagon a lot. So I wanted to start with that one. So in this video, what we are going to do is grab the application that we started in the artillery video, configure Epsagon and see how it works and how hard it is to configure and also how is to read the console and all these kind of things. So. Let's go to the code and to the screen to learn a little bit more about Epsagon and how we can use it in our application. So today we are going to start with Epsagon. Epsagon is tracing, monitoring and logging for serverless applications. It's a third party application and it's quite popular right now. It's just distributed tracing that helps you to monitor and troubleshoot your serverless application. So you can get started. So let's do that. So we go to our project, the one that we created with Artillery, and there we are going to configure Epsagon. So when you create an Epsagon account, you will need to instrument your Lambda. So we can go to the Epsagon web page and click where it says start for free, and let's configure our account. So if we go to the documentation, we can see get started. First, you create an account and then you deploy a pre made cloud formation stack that will deploy some resources that will give Epsagon access to your AWS account. Let's go to our Epsagon web page and deploy the cloud formation stack. And then we create the stack. And this has all kind of resources that Epsagon needs in order to be able to get access to our logs and our monitoring information. So this takes a little while to generate the CloudFormation stack. When it's ready, then we are ready to continue. We can see all the resources that were created, CloudTrail, Epsilon long groups, some Epsilon roles, a bucket where they're going to put all the trail information. And then when that's done, we can refresh this page and we can see that our AWS account is configured. Good. Now we can go back to the instructions and see how we can instrument Lambda functions. So you need to get the Epsagon token and then put it in the plugin if you're using serverless framework. So this is the plugin. First, we need to install the Epsagon library. Then after that, we need to install the plugin. If you want to know more about serverless framework plugins, I recommend you to go to a video I created about it and also have a whole playlist with a lot of really interesting plugins so you can check them out. But this will allow us to instrument the lambdas in this project. So now we can use the plugin in the serverless YAML put it on the top. So for now, we are just following the instructions that they are in the plugins page. And now we need to configure the plugin. So we have this costume property. I will put it before the functions. And there you need to put your Epsilon token. I'm using the parameter store to put it there. So you can just 
use the same or just put it directly there. As the code will be available for you to check out, then I prefer to put it in the parameter store. And I put an application name there that is optional. Good. Now we are ready to deploy this thing and run some tests. So when we deploy after that, then I will be running the artillery test. I will be running the, the test, the flow, so I get to try the whole application. Uh, I did that off camera because it takes a while to run and also for Epsilon to update. So now after this is deployed, I will run the artillery test and we can see what is in the site. So we go to our dashboard and in the main dashboard you can see some insights. I have 31 Anya's functions in my account. That's good. You can connect a Slack so you can get insights in your Slack. This is my health. It's quite good. Cold starts, period cost, monthly cost, invocations and errors. So there was one error here. And this is the invocations in the last 24 hours. So I have created these many invocations. And this is how much my functions cost. These are my top invoke functions. Well, these are the ones we were testing. So it makes sense that they are the most invoked. Then if we go to functions, here you can see all the functions in my account. And the top ones are the ones that have been invoked last. So around 20 minutes ago, I have run these ones. So you can see the monitoring, the application name, invocations, errors, timeouts, out of memory, and blah, 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 blah. So if I click here, I will see when it was called somewhere a few minutes ago. And then this is the memory usage, so I can put it in the last hour so we can see more details. So this is better. Here you can see the account name, the region, the node, the epsilon name. And here you can see the invocations. It was in a period of like 15 minutes or something like that. The memory usage, so basically I'm using 160 megabytes in the most when I have 1024 maybe I should change my memory allocation a little bit <laughs> and these are the duration st statistics so my average is 42 and then more or less they are all taking 142 and here is my invocation list, so I can see all the success. You can filter if there is some exception. I think so. Timeouts out of memories. Let's see if we have any. I don't think so. No. So let's show them all. And then you can hear if you have the ID of the request ID, then you can search for it. You can also filter by time. You can filter by duration, more than, less than, and by use memory. And then if you click in any of the invocations, then you will be seeing some information. This is one of my favorite views of Epsagon, where you can see the architectural diagram of what is going on. So this is the transaction ID with this name. And then we see here the API gateway. We can see the information, what were the headers, the context request. I think this is really cool that everything is in one view, the parameters that we are passing. Then we can see the lambda. We can see the values that lambda return. And then we can see, I don't know, every all the information that we can get for the lambda. Also the event object that is getting. So that's kind of nice. And then we have Dynamo here, and we can see which it was the key and the item. So what we were doing. So this is really nice. So it's a gate item on this order, and this is what we got back. So I think this is really cool that you can see so much detailed information. It's really 
nice when you need to debug something that you can see all this information then if we go to traces search here you can put some function name some payload value and you can filter out things so so if there's some errors you can see them here i don't have any that Then you can also filter by resource name, so you can see, I don't know, whatever resources, resource type, you can see Dynamo. I think this is nice because it also che checks the other resources, it's not only about the lambdas, and that's one of the things I really like from Epsagon, that we can see other resources, not only lambda, because at the end of the day, a serverless application is more than just lambdas is other resources as well and i think this is really good so here if we just click on any search any trace we can open it and we will see something similar that what we saw in the previous view the whole architecture view how we got here and all the information so that's pretty nice then issues manager if there is some problem it will appear here and here are the notification rules that it will send you an email no matter if there is a timeout out of memory exception or inside and this is the architecture map it's kind of nice because it draws automatically when you are running your code and you can also make it like look as you like to so if i would like to order it like this so I can play with these little guys and they will become a little bit more clear depending on how you like your architectural diagrams for example I don't know like this for example there are two API gateways four lambdas and Q and Dynamo in there and I think this is really nice that you can see the, the architectural diagrams and then if you click on them you can see the status of each of the components and the average duration and the events per second and all this simple information that is kind of nice and you can export it as a PNG so then you get your architectural diagram so I think that's kind of really nice because it's a real thing of what is your architecture looking now so this in a nutshell is Epsagon I think it's a really great tool it has a lot of things that AWS, CloudWatch, and X-Ray has, but I think it has other things like the um, seeing the architectural diagrams that I think that gives so much perspective. I would love to see the traces as we see it in X-Ray here. For me, that would be really cool. Also, you can check the logs directly from, from X-Ray as well. So if you need to, you can do that. But I think it's a really nice tool for for centralizing your monitoring this was the video for today if you like it give a big thumbs up and in the next video we are going to continue analyzing third-party uh, monitoring tools if you have something in your mind let me know in the comment box below because as I'm recording this I'm still uh, creating the playlist and if I already completed the playlist don't worry I want to make a second part because there's so many tools that I cannot cover in one go. So I will listen to your suggestions. Also remember that after I finish analyzing the first batch of tools, I will create a blog post with my opinion on each of the tools and a kind of benchmark on them. So uh, I will leave the link in the description box when that post is ready. So stay tuned for that as well. Around here there are other videos from my channel for you to watch, so go ahead and click on them. And if not, I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao ciao!